How does it come to pass that an empress, the sovereign of an empire, the most prominent figure to the right of the emperor, loses everything and succumbs to the grasp of opium addiction? Trapped within a loveless marriage and suffering from mental health struggles and addiction, Empress Wan Rong ultimately passed away alone at the age of 39, ensnared within a prisoner camp overseen by Chinese communist guerrillas. This is the story of the last empress consort of the Qing dynasty in China, later ascending to the title of empress in the puppet state of Manchukuo. Her life, fraught with tragedy and misfortune, paints a somber picture. Curious to delve into how she met her end within the confines of a prison? Stay tuned to unravel the details in this video. The life and death of Empress Wan Rong, who married the last emperor of China, are steeped in monumental anguish. A native of Beijing, she came of age after approximately two millennia of imperial rule, only to join the royal family in its twilight days. Her marriage and the political atmosphere of the time brought the empress nothing but distress, pain, and death. In the waning days of the majestic Qing dynasty, a girl was born destined to bear the title of the last empress of China. On November 13, 1906, in the heart of Beijing, Gobulo Wanrong came into the world, the daughter of influential Rong Yuan, Minister of Internal Affairs and head of one of the most prominent and affluent Manchu families with roots in the dower ethnicity. Although born into the aristocracy, winds of change were already blowing across the vast empire. Her father, a visionary man, advocated for gender equality and yearned for his daughter to receive the best education. Thus, young Wan Rong was entrusted to Isabel Ingram, the daughter of American missionaries, who taught her English and introduced her to Western culture. From an early age, Wan Rong demonstrated an innate talent for traditional Chinese arts. Calligraphy, literature, music, and painting flowed from her hands with incomparable grace. Yet her eager mind also embraced the foreign knowledge her tutor brought. Sadly, her mother, Aisin Joro Hengxin, the fourth princess and granddaughter of the powerful Pu Su, could not witness her daughter's flourishing. Heng Xin departed from this world while giving birth to Wan Rong, leaving a void that would never be filled. In 1911, when Wan Rong was barely five years old, the millennia-old Qing dynasty fell to the Republican Revolution, leading to the establishment of the Republic of China in 1912. Though the imperial titles persisted, the world she knew was on the brink of change forever. The fate of this young woman, educated in ancient traditions and modern ideas, was intertwined with the last days of Chinese royalty. In this part of the story, we encounter the young Chinese emperor Puyi, who despite the political upheavals, was also allowed to retain his title. In an attempt to preserve old customs, authorities arranged for teenage Puyi to have a wedding according to imperial rituals in the now empty Forbidden City. However, with an ironic twist, the young monarch did not choose his future wife conventionally, but was presented with an album of portraits of potential candidates. Po Yi's initial choice fell on Wen Xiu, a girl of merely 12, whose tender age prevented her from becoming his consort immediately. Frustrated, the emperor was reluctantly forced to select Wan Rong as his principal wife, keeping Wen Xiu as a concubine, according to tradition. For 16-year-old Wan Rong, this honor must have been a terrifying experience. The prospect of becoming empress and marrying a perfect stranger filled her with apprehension. As eunuchs and court ladies flocked to prepare her, the young woman initially rebelled. She was tired of lessons, unhappy about marrying someone she had never met before, recalled her brother, Rungchi Gobolo, to the New York Times, giving voice to the anguish that enveloped Wan Rong at that time. Despite his lack of enthusiasm, Puyi took Wan Rong as his wife in a Manchu-style wedding ceremony held before dawn on December 1st, 1922, within the sacred precincts of the Forbidden City. The couple was paraded through Beijing in an ornate Phoenix sedan chair, while thousands of people looked on. During the ceremony, Wan Rong stepped over fire, a saddle, and an apple, according to Manchu tradition. In accordance with ancient custom, the bride and her family were showered with costly bridal gifts. However, things went awry from the outset. The young emperor, overwhelmed by the responsibilities thrust upon him, showed little genuine interest, whether of a sexual or emotional nature, toward his new empress, Wan Rong. The newlyweds were supposed to spend the night together, 
But instead of consummating the marriage, Puyi fled from his room during the night. Despite this, the early days of marriage between Wanrong and Puai passed tranquilly. Both young individuals, barely 16 and 17 years old, seemed to get along well and even exchanged letters in English, where the modern Wanrong signed with her Western name, Elizabeth. Wanrong embraced modernity, English cuisine, and jazz. She was also known for her generosity and, in particular, donated 600 yuan to aid disaster victims in 1923. But within the intimacy of their home, the seeds of unhappiness had already been sown. The couple's union did not seem particularly fitting or fruitful. They had luxuries, castles, an empire to govern. But there was no love between them. Wanrong was jealous of Wen Xiu and soon began using opium for her growing stomach and headaches. And soon she would have even more serious problems than that. Wanrong and Pu Yui were rarely seen together and happy. They went out separately and didn't even dine together. Their intimate encounters were not even discussed. It was an even more forbidden topic. But they never had airs and barely exchanged glances. Despite having Wen Xiu as a concubine, some historians speculate that the young emperor could have been sterile, but this could well have been a euphemism to avoid openly discussing his alleged homosexuality, something that couldn't be tolerated at the time. But times have changed a bit more, and now it is believed that indeed, Wan Rong's husband was in love with men. It is rumored that during his tenure in Changchun as the puppet monarch of Manchukuo, Pu Yi engaged in dalliances with several young male servants. Even his own sister-in-law, Hirosaga, hinted in her memoirs at the emperor's relationships with young boys. Be that as it may, the marriage never bore heirs to continue the dynasty. But truth be told, external circumstances were also poised to complicate matters. In that tense atmosphere, Wan Rong once again found solace in a vice that would mark her life, opium. According to Pu Yi's own recollections, it was fashionable among educated young women to smoke cigarettes laced with small amounts of opium as an analgesic. The Empress, barely a teenager, fell prey to this dangerous habit. The turning point came in 1924, when the Beijing coup orchestrated by warlord Feng Yuxiang forced the imperial couple to flee from the forbidden city to Tianjin. In the tranquil garden villa within the Japanese concession, the cracks in their union fully opened. The relationship between the couple turned completely cold and distant as Pu Yi focused on efforts to restore the Qing imperial regime. But Wan Rong, engulfed in her addiction, openly began to disdain Pu Yi, and both led entirely separate lives. And so, each on their own, they somehow lived as comfortably as they could. But despite her comfortable life, Wan Rong was a modern lady who wore Xiong Sams, high-heeled shoes, and styled her hair. She indulged in shopping sprees while her marriage crumbled. The tragedy that would one day engulf her life was still unthinkable for the young woman who was once presented as the perfect candidate for empress. Wan Rong maintained a facade of apparent normalcy, pretending that everything was fine. But inwardly, her soul fractured under the weight of loneliness, boredom, and abandonment. Despite appearing indifferent, she deeply felt the pain of Pu Yi, her imperial husband, never truly loving her with genuine passion. To him, she was merely another pawn in the grand scheme of others' ambitions. This harsh reality chipped away at Wan Rong's sanity day after day. The rivalry with Wen Xiu only intensified until one day in 1931, Wen Xiu grew weary of the arrangement and left Puyi. In his troubled mind, the young monarch blamed Wan Rong for the turn of events. He even recorded in his memoirs the resentment he harbored towards his empress for driving away his lover. From then on, the delicate and fragile bond that once tied Pu Yi and Wan Rong together shattered completely. The few words that were exchanged ceased altogether, replaced by an agonizing silence that stretched endlessly through the empty halls of the palace. In 1932, the plans of the Japanese Empire to expand its dominion in Asia took an unexpected turn in the lives of Pu Yi and Wan Rong. That year, the Japanese invaded the Manchuria region in northeast China and established a puppet state called Manchukuo. In an attempt to legitimize their puppet regime, the Japanese military turned to the deposed Pu Yi to reign as the emperor of Manchukuo. In exchange for wealth and a remnant of symbolic power, Pu Yi agreed to be a puppet of the invaders. Wan Rong tried to escape Japanese surveillance several times but failed. 
Thus, in 1934, the imperial couple left the relative tranquility of Tianjin and moved to the new capital of Manchukuo, Changchun. In the Forbidden City Palace of Manchukuo, Puyi and Wanrong relived the pompous ceremonies and rituals of the imperial era, but this time as mere puppets of Japanese ambitions. The Japanese bestowed upon Wanrong the title of Empress of Manchukuo. The couple lived in the temporary palace of Changchun, which is now the museum of the imperial palace of Manchukuo. For the unhappy empress addicted to opium, the luxuries of the court were nothing but a mirage that failed to conceal the harsh reality. She had fallen from grace as the last vestige of an ancient dynasty subjected to the whims of foreign powers. Like a bird in a gilded cage, the puppet empress had neither freedom nor the love of Puyi and suffered from mental illnesses in addition to her opium addiction. Between July 1938 and July 1939, Wan Rong consumed an average of two ounces of opium per day, which was an enormous amount. Then things worsened even more. By the year 1940, in the dark corridors of the Palace of Manchukuo, rumors began to circulate like a murky river. It was said that Empress Wan Rong, the young woman of noble birth turned hostage to others' ambitions, had fallen into the most forbidden of transgressions. Gossip suggested she was pregnant, but the father was not her husband, Puyi, but rather his aide, T.A. Li Yu. In times past, such dishonor would have been paid with one's life. But the times were different, and Puyi, the puppet emperor, chose to buy the lover's silence with a generous sum and banish him from the city. Perhaps there was a glimmer of compassion for his unhappy wife in his mind. When the time for childbirth arrived, Wan Rong gave birth to a daughter. However, a cruel fate had an even more tragic ending in store. Doctors, following orders, snatched the life of the baby with a lethal injection. Some rumors even suggest that Puyi, blinded by rage, may have thrown the tiny body into the flames, though such details were censored from his memoirs. In any case, the death of her daughter dealt a heavy blow to Wan Rong, who descended into madness and isolated herself from the outside world. Wan Rong had lost all reasons to keep going, she had lost everything. Love, that warm and comforting feeling, had never truly been part of her life. Her husband, Puyi, had never loved her sincerely. She was just another pawn in the game of others' interests. The child she bore, meant to be the continuation of her lineage, was taken from her in a cruel manner. The memory of the little one being coldly murdered would haunt her forever. The empire she was supposed to rule wasn't truly hers either. Manchukuo, that puppet state, was nothing but a sham created by the Japanese invaders. It was like a golden cage where Wan Rong and Puyi played the roles of emperors, while Japanese soldiers held up their ridiculous charade. She ceased to be seen in public, no longer bothered with her appearance, and rarely rose from her bed. She stopped attending birthdays or any kind of celebrations. With severe physical and mental pain, Wan Rong blamed her father for ruining her life for his own career. The once sophisticated lady was reduced to a shadow, her mind continuously escaping through the opium haze that enveloped her. Her once promising destiny had been consumed by the voracious flames of dishonor and tragedy. If this was not already a decadent situation, things could get even worse. By the mid-1940s, the world was engulfed in the disasters of the Second World War. Japan, the same nation that had installed Puyi as its puppet in Manchukuo, had joined the Axis led by Nazi Germany and Fascist Italy. In its arrogant quest to build a vast empire in Asia, the Japanese launched invasions across much of the Pacific and Southeast Asia. However, their advance was halted in places like Midway, marking a turning point in the war. From then on, the Allied forces led by the United States, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union began to reverse Japanese conquests inch by inch. By 1945, the noose was tightening around the once powerful Japanese empire. While American troops stormed islands like Iwo Jima and Okinawa, the Soviets advanced relentlessly from the West. Despite their terrible losses, the Soviet Union had managed to repel the Nazi invasion and now turned its sights on territories occupied by the Japanese in China and Korea. In August 1945, the Red Army unleashed its major offensive to reclaim Manchuria. Within days, the defenses of the ephemeral puppet state of Manchukuo crumbled. 
The Kwantung army, once feared in the region, was swept aside. The Japanese war machine collapsed precipitously. Amidst this chaos, Wan Rong, the unfortunate last empress, had become a specter. Her opium addiction had brought her to the brink of death. Supposedly, she could barely walk or even see when Soviet troops surged into Manchuria in 1945. Driven by desperation, Puyi fled, leaving behind his agonizing wife. Wan Rong and her sister-in-law, Hiro Saga, were arrested by Chinese communists in January 1946 as they attempted to escape to Korea. Incarcerated in Jilin, the hapless Wan Rong spent her final days writhing on the floor in the agonies of opium withdrawal, displayed like a caged zoo animal. She finally died alone in a pool of her own urine at the age of 39. Her remains were never found. In the vast annals of Chinese history, Few pages are dedicated to recounting the fateful fate of Wanrong, the last woman to hold the title of Empress. If she is remembered at all today, it is merely as a tragic figure, another chess piece in the grand chessboard of Manchu imperial decline. But she is more than that. The life and death of the last Empress of China is a captivating tale of grandeur and decay, of broken promises and dreams shattered by the turbulent currents of history and the lack of love.